uh, well, Jordan, I must start with this. Uh, the O2 Arena, when you saw the pictures emerging of the damage that Storm Eunice was causing, did you even start to believe that perhaps the gods were turning against you after the, the terrible run of luck that you've had over the last 12 months? I just thought maybe it's just me. Uh, I done my last bar Friday, drove home, drove, got, got into my house and was just put my feet up and then I had about 50 messages coming through, just ping, 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 ping. And it was all pictures of the roof just flapping. I just thought, do you know what? What can you do? <laughs> it'll be what it'll be. But, you know, it was, it was plenty of time to sort it and hopefully uh, it's not going to be an issue. Let's just have a little chat then about the last period of time then, Jordan. Plagued by injury, by illness, by head clashes as well and everything in between. Is it safe to say there's a relief that you're sat here in this European title fight week is finally here and you're here and you're fit and you're well. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I feel convinced that it's going to happen now. We're three days away. Uh, everything's gone well. I feel in good shape. I feel strong. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I feel like this is my time now. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting in that ring and, and you know, putting that last spell of bad luck and, and upset and, and disappointment behind me. Despite all the obstacles that you've been faced with and have been thrown at you, Dave said it's never disrupted a day's training. How important do you believe your own mental toughness and your own resilience have been to, to get you through that tough period? I think it's vital. Um, and it, I don't know, it's, uh, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm that kid who just always turn up. No matter what's going on, I'll turn up. Yeah. I'll find a way and uh, we'll get there in the end. That's, 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 the, that's the way I think, we'll get there in the end. We'll just keep going, keep going and, and get through that get through that mud and, and finally get there. Let's talk about uh, the last fight because you were looking really good up until the fight was unfortunately stopped due to that head clash. But I was just listening to an interview you did recently and you said, you know, if that had been lower down on your face, that type of cut, it could have been a plastic surgery job. Are you the type to try and seek the positives out of what happened despite how frustrating it was. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's hard to seek the, the positives and everyone has days where they get down and, and think, oh, bloody hell, it's just not, it's, it's not working, this and that. But I feel like you have to, otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have made it this far if, if I didn't. And, you know, there's always positives in a bad situation. And I think, you know, my career and, you know, the last 18 months, two years has, has taught me that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to fighting and, and putting that spell of bad luck behind me and uh, pushing on to get some momentum. And eyes on the prize then. Winning that blue and gold European title is a fantastic feat for any British fighter. It's a, a very highly valued belt to win in boxing. How motivated are you to pick up this title, Jordan? And what would it mean for your, for your life and your career as well? Very motivated. Um, it's a massive fight. Uh, I'm fighting a four-time European champion. You know, he's been there and done it. So, you know, he is a, a solid European level contender. So, for me, it's so important that I, I beat him and, and do a good job, pick up that European title. I feel like that's, that's, that's the one for me to, to push on with and, and really, uh, you know, establish myself above that British and, and the European level. So, I feel like this is my time to, to go and pick it up and it, it means everything to me. Um, you know, all the upsets, all the hard work, all the failures and all the, uh, you know, missing my family and, and being away. It's going to be worth it when, on Sunday night when I pick up that title. Let's talk a little bit about the man in the opposite corner, the champ, Kareem Gurphy. Just talk to me about him stylistically um, as a fighter. How tough a proposition is he and, and what sort of fight have you prepared for? Um... He's, he's a very good fighter, he's a, he's a tough fighter, he's very experienced now, um, you know, he's been at a high level for a long time, um, he's been in you know, world title fights and, and he's one of those fighters that no one is going to really have an easy night against, um, I feel like when he was down at Bantamweight he, he looked a bit weight drained um, and he's since come up to featherweight uh, and, and won the European title. So. You know, he, he's proven, he's established, he's, he's the man to beat. And, and I'm, I'm just looking forward to sharing, sharing the ring. I feel like when, when you share the ring with a, a good fighter, a solid champion, then it raises your game. You soak up some of that experience. And I'm looking forward to 
the fighter that I'm going to be after this fight because you know I'm going to have to show the stuff that I've not done before to win this fight um, and and it's exciting for me because he is a good fighter and I feel like the better the opponent the better I perform and that's that's always been the case. Talking about stuff that you're going to have to show you've not done before this I believe is your third fight scheduled for 12 uh, but you've never been forced to 36 minutes so far in your career. Gwerfi can be hurt we've seen that against Lee McGregor, we've seen that in his career, but do you have a certain degree of mental security, mainly through the diligent preparation that, you, that you've put in, that if it does go the 12 rounds, you'll be there till the very end? Yeah, I mean, every time I've been scheduled to go 12, it's not happened. I think I was scheduled to go 12 with Ryan Doyle for the Commonwealth title. Um, he'd just come off a, a big win against Bellotti, stopped him in seven. I was scheduled to, to fight Emmanuel Dominguez, uh, for the WBA International in Peterborough, that went three. Um, so yeah, every time we've been scheduled, we'd, we've not seen the final bell. Um, but you know, we might do this time. So every time they have been scheduled, I have prepared diligently. Uh, I've made sure that I've done the rounds in the gym. Last week, I sparred twelve rounds with with two different opponents. You know, doing three in, three out, and and I feel good. I feel strong. Um, fitness isn't an issue for me. So if if it goes to twelve, we'll be ready. And um, in a way, I'd love to go 12 rounds to soak up the experience, uh, more time, ring time and, and more time in front of the champion. Eddie said he's got a big year planned for you, obviously, but it means you must get through this fight to then push on to, towards a world title. He said it's must win for, for your career. Have you put that pressure on yourself that this is a must win fight? Yeah, I mean, I always like to put a lot of pressure on myself and I feel like I perform well under pressure. But... Every fight's must win. Every fight you go into, and every fight, every fight's your last fight because you know you know you, it, this is boxing. Anything can happen. It's a brutal sport, um, and every fight's your last fight, and that's how you have to fight. Uh, that's how you have to approach it. And and yeah, I think I'd be a fool to overlook Krim Gurphy. So I prepared well, um, but I'm looking forward to seeing the fruits of what comes after. What do you believe that, that might be? What does the ideal 2022 look like for you, Jordan? Um, well, for me, get this fight, win the belt, become European champion, maybe a defence, maybe an eliminator. Um, uh, I know Eddie mentioned a big fight with Isaac Lowe uh, as a first defence. I mean, I'd be open to that. I think the fans have all, all been calling for it. Everybody's been asking, oh, when are you going to shut him up? And this and that. So... You know, that's, that's a possibility, uh, but you know, you never know what's going to happen. I know Kiko's fighting uh, Warrington. I could get a straight shot at the winner of that, so who knows? I don't think you're Isaac Lowe's biggest fan, are you? Nah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can elaborate if you want me to. <laughs> Go for it if you like. Don't like him. No. <laughs> but nah, you know what? He, he don't like me and I don't like him. And there's been back and forth, um, which is, you know... To me, it's amusing, but I think it actually upsets him. So, you know, if that fight happens, then I'm happy. If not, there's always bigger, bigger fish to fry. You mentioned uh, two big fights in the featherweight division. It's on fire at the moment. So much to look forward to. Firstly, your mate Lee Wood uh, in a real pick'em, isn't mm. it? We meet Colin on March 12th. Can't wait for that one. When you do break that down as a, a fellow fighter, what sort of fight are you expecting? Um, I, it's going to be a great fight. Um, the fans are in for a treat. I think as as I look at the whole zone schedule, that's the fight that myself and probably the majority of people are looking forward to the most. So, you know, people always ask me, who do you think is going to win? Who's gonna, who do you think is going to win? Because I've actually sparred both of them, probably hundreds of rounds, especially with Lee, and probably hundreds of rounds with Conlon as well. Um, it's, it's a great fight, but I think the difference will be that Lee's going to make him work hard from the start. He's going to uh, he's going to work him over. And Conlon's not as efficient as people think he is. Um, I think that's going to pay down the stretch. I think Lee's power, you know, Lee can punch from the first bell to the to the last last round. So it's going to be interesting to see after all the work that Conlon has to put in to to match him and win the rounds. Is he going to be able to take that power late on in the fight? Um, for me, I think Lee wins by late stoppage. 
and uh, I'll be there with no voice left screaming for him. <laughs> and uh, just a quick word then on, on Josh Warrens and Kiko Martinez. Obviously, Kiko turned up in Sheffield. He was meant to be there to make up the numbers on paper and he shocked the world at one of the, the KOs of the year. Do you believe Josh has what it takes to, to win back that IBF belt? Yeah, I mean, Josh boxed him before and beat him before. I know it was a close fight and some people thought uh, Kiko won, but you know sometimes when, you, when you've been, been in there and beat a guy before, you've got the measure of them. But, you know, the paths have taken different routes in between. So, you know, Kiko's got good momentum because he's just knocked out the man in the division, which is Galahad. Um, and he's going to be full of confidence. He knows he's got that power. He looks like he's been, you know, on a roll, really. And Warrington hasn't looked what he used to. Uh, you know, in the Lara rematch, he... Uh, didn't look as confident as it as he has before. He, he looked a little bit um, afraid, not afraid, but um, a bit, bit unsure about trading, uh, which is understandable from the first fight uh, with Lara, where you know he, he did get stopped. So it's going to be interesting um, to see who whoever applies himself on the night is going to win, and and it could be either man, but I think Warrington could nick it. Well, time will tell, and we certainly can't wait for what's to come. But finally, uh, Jordan, all focus for you on this Sunday night. When you do break it down in your own mind, how do you see this fight unfolding, and, and how do you want to win this fight as well? I mean, I want to win this fight doing what I do, uh, looking good, being classy, and um, just st sticking to my boxing. Um, but, you know, it all depends on him, how he, de how he comes out. Um, We'll see. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, all I know is I'm going to win. Jordan Gill, we're looking forward to it and wishing the best of luck. Thank you.